Hi everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez. This is the Weekly Report, a look at news about the programs and services provided by departments of the City of Kansas City, Missouri. Many Kansas City residents will receive the city's magazine, KC Moore, in the mail soon. It has stories about the city's recent innovations, public safety projects, community development, and much more. To read it online, go to kcmo.org slash kcmoore. The Missouri and U.S. Departments of Agriculture have expanded the emerald ash borer quarantine to include all of Missouri. Now, due to this expansion, the city's leaf and brush disposal restrictions have now been lifted. Residents may now recycle at any of the city's three leaf and brush drop-off centers. For more information about the city's leaf and brush drop-off centers, please visit kcmo.org trash and click on leaf and brush drop-off. Nearly a half million children in the United States have elevated levels of lead in their blood that may cause significant health damage. To raise awareness of lead poisoning consequences, the city's health department will provide several services during National Lead Poisoning Prevention Week from October 20th through the 26th. You can get free blood testing by appointment, free testing of household items, or even have Letty the Dinosaur visit your school or organization. For more information, go to kcmo.org slash health or call 816-513-6048. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Janet O'Hagan with Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities. Throughout the year, City Facilities host a variety of exciting and unique events for all interest that add to the Kansas City experience. November is a month with many events for residents of all ages to choose from. The American Royal Cutting Horse Show will take place at Hale Arena from November 6th to the 8th and the United Professional Horsemen's Association National Championship will take place at Kemper Arena from November 12th to the 16th. Don't miss these exciting national championships. Tickets are available at Ticketmaster.com or at the Kemper Arena box office. For more family fun in November, the Ararat Shriners, who have called Kansas City home for 78 years, will return to the Municipal Auditorium from November 14th through the 17th with lions, tigers, elephants, and the circus acts that make the annual event so exciting and fun for all ages. More than 30,000 residents are expected to attend this year's circus. Tickets are on sale at Ticketmaster.com and you can go to KCShrineCircus.com for additional information. Start your holiday season on November 22nd at the Tree Lighting Ceremony. City Lights, the annual downtown holiday lighting ceremony, is also the official kickoff of the Salvation Army's Christmas campaign. The City Lights display encompasses Barney Alice Plaza and several nearby buildings, including the Kansas City Marriott downtown, which features spectacular computer-generated holiday images across its 22-story facade. These are just a few of the many events the Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities offers our community. To learn about even more events, visit kcconvention.com and click on the events calendar or call 816-513-5000. Marlboro's in the red. 
field's getting set up, so wait until she gets done. So, drivers are ready. Get set. Go. You don't, you're not just in this for yourself and your team. You can actually help other teams out and that's noted, that gets a, uh, an achievement award. So remember that when you go into competition. You don't want to just, like, oh, we're hiding it and it's a big secret. It's not a big secret. Everybody's helping each other out around there and stuff. So that sportsmanship is real important. Mark, get set, go. And this would be basically what they call a skill challenge, and they actually do have those. And we're going to probably try to have one at Southeast this year. Okay. Where the team don't go against the team, and you just see how many points they can score. And they get national ranking. Uh, four of them. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right. Okay, that's the end of the match. At this point, before you get your robot, hold it, hold it. Don't get your robot. But in an event, you have to wait until the judges go around and look and see what all scores count. Uh, one thing that can get you disqualified or put out of a, a match is if your robot is intentionally hitting another robot. Uh, this, this is not battle bots and stuff. You can get ejected out. You won't get no points for that round. If you do it a couple of times, they can put you out of the whole event. The thing is, this is about you guys with the, uh, who part who participating in the program. That we hopefully we can build up on this. But with with, uh, with uh, George's sister, we plan to move it forward. And so, George, again, thank you so much on behalf of Parks and Recreation. No problem. Yeah. No problem. Active shooter is a phrase that unfortunately has become part of our vocabulary in recent years. In response to the many inquiries we have received, the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department has created a video to address what options an individual might consider should they ever have the misfortune to encounter an active shooter. While it's impossible to create guidelines for every situation, the video does provide many tips that could save lives. Here are some excerpts from the 15-minute video. According to a 2007 article in Law Enforcement Technology, it is nearly impossible for law enforcement to predict if and when another shooting incident will happen. If an individual, a team, or group of people have their mind set on taking human lives and they keep their plans secret, most likely they will be able to carry out the event. The vast majority of active shooters are under the age of 30. This proves very difficult to develop a profile for an active shooter. Young people are difficult to profile because they are still developing both psychologically and emotionally. After the initial shots are fired, you may hear more gunfire with screaming or other signs of a problem, such as people running, doors slamming, and most probably yells for help or for the police. Did you hear that? Statistically, the workplace is the most common setting for an active shooter event. The question becomes how well prepared is your business, school, or entity? How prepared are you? In no particular order, each of these could be a life-saving response. It is equally important to realize that one or more of these responses may not work for you. Running may be an option for many, however running may very well not be a viable option for everyone. Fading out of the shooter's line of sight may very well increase your odds of survival rather than standing out in the open. Fortifying a hiding spot may also provide a greater chance of survival. The key to surviving such an incident may be creating time and distance between you and the location of the shooter. Running is instinctual, 
and for many this will be the initial reaction. Are you aware of your surroundings enough to know where to run? Are you familiar with all access points in your school or business? Are the staff and students aware of entrances and exits to the facility? Has your business or school run a drill to determine if personnel can successfully evacuate the premises in a timely manner? Come on, come on. Cover is a term used to mean you're hiding, and the structure you're hiding behind will not be penetrated by the shooter's ammunition. Cover is superior to concealment. Pre-planning should help you determine places of cover and concealment within your building. The environment can provide many weapons. A fire extinguisher could be used to hit an active shooter, or the chemical spray inside the fire extinguisher may incapacitate someone. Even if the police are notified that the shooter is dead or incapacitated, the police will move toward the location of the shooter. Individuals within the area of the active shooter will undoubtedly be looking for rescue from the responding officers. If you would like to have the video, Flee, Fade, Fortify, or Fight presented to your community group, workplace, or school, contact your community interaction officer. I'm Officer Shelley Gaddis. Have a safe week. Looking ahead, the city will host two curbside leaf and brush collections this fall. Collection for residents in the South Zone takes place the weeks of October 21st and November 18th. On their regular trash day, residents may leave up to 20 bags or bundles of leaves and brush on their curb. Collection for the Central Zone is the weeks of October 28th and December 9th. North Zone pickup will be the weeks of November 4th and December 2nd. To check your pickup day, visit kcmo.org trash and click on Leaf and Brush Collection. For more information about this or any of today's stories, please log on to kcmo.org, scroll down to the bottom right-hand corner and click on the weekly report. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.